The only thing I, I do want to share with everyone, uh, one, I do want to, again, uh, cannot over-communicate and re-emphasize the importance of Veterans Day and many first responders, teachers, any public servants, uh, anyone that from law enforcement to local community members to engineers or uh, folks that are part of elected positions out here to help the community either from local state or governmental just again everyone out here to organize this event to one honor and give recognition to our veterans past and present let's give everybody a round of applause and that, please. I'll keep my my speech extremely short because um, I, I know uh, we got some uh, very high speed uh, cadets out here they're representing and doing their best they can so please you know, shake it off make sure you bend your knees a little bit I know uh, your uh, your instructors are looking out for you guys and I don't want you guys to fall out or pass out or anything like that so please ensure you guys shake it off for a second and not uh, hurt yourself um, the only thing I want to share with everybody um, what's important significant for me when it comes to Veterans Day is a personal experience that's from the bottom of my heart and what occurred uh, in my own life 30 years ago before me joining the service. I'll tell you that I come from the first generation of being born in the United States. Mom and dad were born and raised in Mexico. Dad from the northern part of Mexico in Coahuila, Mexico, and my mom was from the southern part of Mexico in Michoacan, Mexico. Um, because of them, they strived the importance of hard work, dedication, effort to go through the naturalization process to get their citizenship and to bring away a life for their kids, for me and my sister. They did everything they could to ensure that my sister and I and the family got the freedoms that they never got, the service, the commitment, the sacrifices that took them to get to where they're at. My dad and the family was in the ranching industry and the cattle drives and roundups in Mexico. And then he also became a teacher later on where he went to school in the US, studied, got his teacher certification, became a history teacher. And then he went on to becoming a vice principal at the local community at the high school. We could tell you that was a pretty struggle life for me going to school while my dad was the vice principal at the high school. So you can imagine how that was like. Please don't call dad if I get, you know. Uh, yeah, so tough love, corporal punishment, uh, disciplinary actions was pretty big deal at the house. Uh, my dad made a point to ensure that I get scuffed up or schooled or uh, get some good uh, heart to heart come to Jesus talks with him when he, uh, I was insubordinate or I had any shortcomings in school. Because all I wanted to do was either hang out with friends, hang out with my buddies, go out and play sports, and uh, do what a knucklehead kid in those younger years wants to do. My mom, on the other hand, she was uh, a bank teller. Uh, later on, it took her a little bit longer to go through the naturalization process, but she finally got there. I think she actually go had to take her exam at least twice. Uh, she didn't do so well, and Dad wasn't too happy about that, so he had to like help her out during that process. Um, but mom and dad taught me the values of hard work, dedication, commitment. Dad taught me to be a man, to toughen up, and learn what it means to earn, to deserve, to go out there and just bust your rear end to make a living. The honor, the commitment, the service to the ideas of this great nation in America. Mom taught me to be a gentleman, to treat a lady. So I grew up in a very traditional and conservative family. My point in all this is I did not have the lineage or legacy of a military background. I didn't really have an uncle, an aunt, a cousin that served in the military. I grew up in the ranching, cattle drive, and just being a cowboy in Mexico. Uh, when I got to high school, when I got to the age of 14, 